Talk now to the Conservative MP Owen Patterson, former Northern Ireland Secretary and a member of the pro-Brexit ERG group, who joins me now. Uh, a very good morning to you, Mr Patterson. Uh, you voted against rejecting no deal yesterday. So what are your next moves? Will you also be voting against an extension of Article 50 this evening? Well, don't forget, even despite all the motions and excitements last night, the law of the land is still that we leave at 11 o'clock on the 29th of March. And that would deliver what 17.4 million people voted for. And I was sitting through these debates. You, you just get this extraordinary sense that the House of Commons is completely out of touch with those people who voted. The House of Commons gave the people the right to decide. It was made absolutely crystal clear that if the people voted to leave, the House of Commons would go through the necessary legislative measures to honour it. And what we're facing is this absolute constitutional crunch because every previous referendum the people on the European Communities Act back in 1975, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, the AV, the people have politely and obediently gone along with what the establishment wanted. This time, as you see in these debates, to the horror of the political establishment, to the horror of the media establishment we see constantly, to the horror of the commercial establishment, organisations like the CBI, the people have gone against the establishment and the establishment hates it and is doing everything it can to frustrate the people. What we should do, and I voted clearly yesterday, it's idiotic to take no deal off the table because all these European negotiations always come to a head at the very, very last minute. And we should, keep, we should very clearly keep no deal there. And it's the law of the land to bring compression to these negotiations. Nonetheless, we are where we are. And a majority of MPs did vote yesterday to take no deal off the table. So in terms of the vote tonight, what are your plans? Would it be your instinct uh, to vote against an extension or do you think that you should vote for Theresa May's version of an extension, a shorter extension, uh, for fear that a longer extension may be what emerges? Well, I've just seen the Tusk tweet saying he was going to propose that there is a long extension. And of course, he's bound to, isn't he? We know the European establishment hates Brexit and it wants to keep it, its paws on our money. So there's absolutely no question. I'm, I'm sure he'll be pushing for a longer extension. I would be very strongly opposed to that. That means this whole ghastly saga goes on for months and months, and it's uncertainty that is now causing real damage. I was rung early this morning by an incredibly successful businessman, huge entrepreneur, who's created enormous amounts of wealth and jobs, and he says, just leave. We're all ready to leave. The vast majority of businesses he's in touch with are organised and they want to leave. So and, I would only support say a they very aren't short and they extension. Haven't had enough, and many others say they aren't ready to leave because they haven't had enough advice from the government. They simply haven't had the certainty. But in terms of but your vote, in terms of your vote, the there must be a, a huge amount of tactical voting going on amongst MPs at the moment, trying to second guess what any particular decision may or may not lead to next. Yeah, just let me f just finish your answering your first question. On, on an extension, I, I would not be in favour of a long extension because that would drag out this saga. Um, I did vote and strongly support the Malthouse Compromise Amendment put down by Damien Green, which gives a very clear route out, uh, but did actually ask for a small extension to May the 22nd in order that we could come to interim arrangements uh, with the EU. That would be sensible. Th there could be a case for a short extension if we need time to do legal details, but I'm absolutely emphatically not in favour of a long extension because this will just drag on and on and it would be a deliberate tactic, uh, or actually not more than that, a long-term strategy to kill off the witches of the 17.4 million people. So you, you, may, you may clear, vote a as a member of the ERG, you may vote... Sorry, sorry, is, Mr. sorry Mr. Patterson, for, for interrupting, but as a member of the ERG, you may vote, am I reading this correctly, for uh, what Theresa May seems to be pushing for, which is that shorter extension. You may possibly vote for that tonight. I, I've, I've just come straight here from home. I haven't been into the Commons yet, and I haven't seen the order paper, and I haven't seen the motion and the uh, um, any amendments, obviously, which we put down later this morning, so I'll decide then. But, but broadly, uh, I'm absolutely opposed to a long extension because that is purely a mechanism for defying the 17.4 million people. I might look carefully at a short extension if it could deliver a definitive leave. Much the better would be to leave, as the law stands now, on the 29th. And the ERG, I, I, I would just like to make this very clear, we represent mainstream Conservative opinion. Time and again at AGMs, we're hearing from members of Parliament that they have overwhelming support. 
we're described as extremists and ultras. All we want to see is the Conservative manifesto delivered. Every Conservative MP was elected on a manifesto which said we will honour the Leave vote and we will honour it by leaving the customs union, leaving the single market and leaving the remit of the ECJ. And that's all we are doing. So we're, we're always sort of characterised as extremists, the extreme end of the Tory party. We are actually bang in the middle of the mainstream. The people who are totally out I, of I line... I guess some of your colleagues, would, some of your colleagues might night. dispute that, Mr Patterson, whether you are bang in the middle of the mainstream. Clearly, the Conservative Party is a very broad church. There are, there are huge uh, ranges of opinion. Um, but can I just well, come I could, on to this point? point? I mean, wh where, where do you think, or do you think it is possible at all for MPs to find a point... Uh, at which they can compromise, at which they can come together uh, around some sort of deal, or do would you personally be content for the UK to leave without a deal? It seems you are on the 29th of March. Would you prefer, possibly, to achieve a deal if that is at all possible? We've always been absolutely clear. A deal is much better. Uh, and that's why I've worked uh, very hard with my other colleagues on the Alternative Arrangements Group discussing with Steve Barclay and a whole range of senior civil servants on proposals uh, which could replace the backstop. And that's, that's the whole basis of the Malthouse Compromise, which has brought MPs from right across the spectrum in the Tory party to go for a deal. But we have to respect the 17.4 million. And if we cannot get agreement, we have to leave. And this, this idea of no deal is a nonsense. There's been a whole string of side agreements already, aeroplanes, you look at the City of London, the agreements, insurance industry, uh, truck drivers, uh, tariffs have been agreed. You, you hear from Calais, the northern region of France, they're all ready. But, but so and much they that want, hasn't uh, been agreed. So much that also deal. hasn't been agreed, Mr Patterson. Yes, but I get rung by a very senior businessman this morning who says, just get on with it because it's the uncertainty that's now damaging business. And they will find a way through. Business is like water. It and the, C always the CBI finds a way disagree through. with that, don't they? The CBI disagree with that. They, they want to, uh, you know, they, they want this process extended so that a, a deal can be achieved. Yeah, the CBI represents a small number of businesses who are fanatically opposed to Brexit. There are very large numbers of businesses who won't have anything to do with the CBI and despair when you hear them constantly being put on the telly and the radio. They have been very strongly opposed to Brexit all along. They were wrong on so many other recent big issues. They were wrong on the euro. They were wrong on the ERM. They were wrong on numerous macroeconomic decisions. So I'm afraid I dismiss them. I listen to real businessmen, real entrepreneurs on the ground who've created real jobs and real wealth. And They're the course, people I like do, to do not corporate on, bureaucrats. We do have voices on who are in favour of Brexit, like yourself. I, I just want to move away from Brexit for a moment, though, if I may, as we introduced you, of course, we reminded viewers that you were...